My name is Russell, and this is the Backstab Podcast. I am Josh. I am Michael. <laughs> I'm Austin. I didn't hear a click, damn it. <laughs> Just because his, mu- his mouse battery died in, his, uh, in the standard clicky thing doesn't click. Yeah. Right, anyways, what do you call a lesbian bowling team? What? The Lickety Splits. <laughs> that's, that's fair. What the? <laughs> I like my gutter ball reference better. <laughs> oh, I like it too. I just lost him before and didn't give him the uh, right. give him the answer. And he goes gutter ball. Michael has a story to tell everybody. Yeah, Michael has. Oh, we're telling we start, that first. Yes, t- t- talk about this. For, we're we're, okay. we're doing this a little differently today because something really fucking funny <laughs> happened earlier, and, and we didn't tell because uh, because uh, Josh is there. We didn't tell Austin or Rusty yet. Because we figured the laughs would be better on the podcast. Which is why I didn't tell him that joke yet. Either. From so. what I gather, it has something to do with a truck. And that's all I was informed. It was actually a car. Specifically Hannah's car. Okay, so Hannah. Our friend Hannah. We're all hanging out. And we're, and we're in the parking lot. We're all leaving. Because, you know, we're coming to go over here. And our friend Hannah, she's like... What is she, like 4'11"? She, she is, she is tiny. She, I, I'm 6'5". So, I mean, I tower over here and I... I'm always making, you know, the, the short jokes and everything and whatnot. Because, man, how can you not? Don't blame me. Anyways, a little backstory. She's in her yellow uh, Ford Focus, and she's backing up. And she kind of aims the car towards me. And me and, uh, and Josh is standing behind me away. He's looking at uh, helping someone with something else. And he doesn't see me. He sees me standing there, and then she's backing up towards me. And I hold out my arms, and I give her this look. And she can see me in the mirror. And she's looking right at me. I see her eyes in the mirror narrow. And she starts speeding up, coming towards me. I was like, okay. So I run towards the car, jump, uh, put my foot on the bumper, jump, roll over. And now I'm on top of her car, and she stops. And I start sliding towards the front of it. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, I turn around, and he's on top of Hannah's car, man. (laughs) Hannah's just, I can hear her yelling inside the car. (laughs) <laughs> so I, I it's see like her, the fiberglass of bows under him and everything. It's like... She she she, uh, she opens the door, um, and then she starts yelling at me. Her face is bright red. She's mad, of course. And she starts yelling at me, so I jump off the car and start running away. And now, I'm running away. I'm about, you know, what, about, say, 20 yards out? Yeah. Turn around and, then and see I hear, laughing. Yeah. And Josh is laughing his ass off, and Hannah's standing there next to her car, bright red. And she slams the door and starts walking towards me because I stopped and turned around. And then she gets this look on her face. <laughs> it's all, it's just this look on her face like, oh, no. She turns, goes, to, goes back to her car, checks the handle, and it's locked. She locked her keys in her car in park. While it was, while still, it was running still running. In the middle of the library <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> And immediately, uh, I was blamed. <laughs> She's like, it was your fault! And I'm like, no, I didn't do anything. I was just on top of the car. I was on the outside of the car at all times. There was no way I could have locked your keys in your car. <laughs> it was just, it was absolutely fucking hilarious. Because you know how Hannah gets, she gets like this inflamed, like angry look She's on her face. So and it was the, like, the entire, her, her entire composure just like faded. It was like she was like turned going pale. to kill him for being on top of her car. She like because he was like really he fast. was literally on top of the car. Yeah, he could break the roof of that man. Yes, yes, I, exactly. No, I <laughs> Had you hit the windshield? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite agile. Well, I'm just saying like windshields are not as strong as you yeah, think they true. are. This is true. Because like my cousin slid down a windshield with his socks. The very first thing that happened, but it went. Oh wow. Right, I, it didn't, it didn't break. I tried to climb up my car once. It didn't break. Smacked through. into a like, and the entire thing's gone. I've been, on, the, I've been on top of a lot of cars. Because of the safety glass, all it did was like, they like cracked and like encaved, but it didn't break. I've jumped on a lot of people's cars, and if, if you distribute your weight properly, you won't be a problem. So I mean, there's that. So yeah, he I mean, gets a lot. Of I it. didn't. I didn't scratch her car or anything. So I mean, there's that, and I didn't dent it. I, I just wanted to screw with her, which I do a lot, like to say the short jokes. And I, I even made one there. She was so pissed off. Because Josh, Josh's immediate reaction was, well, apparently the gravity did it or something. And said, well, it wouldn't have been a problem for her. She's so close to the ground already. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what, Hannah? If you're listening to this, I'm sorry. I, I too, am sorry. Hannah, I'm, I'm so sorry you locked your keys in the car and I got you so Hannah, mad. Hannah, but, but I'm sorry I love you have to deal with them every Thursday. <laughs> every Thursday, I have to deal with my crap. Just punch him. 
Just punch my guy in the face. You can punch me. Or I mean, nothing. Sorry, that's, that's about straight. <laughs> you can punch me in the face if you can reach. But I'm sorry. She's I'm not sorry. even here and you're joking <laughs> with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all right. It's okay, right. Hannah. You're beautiful and I love you. All right, well, we got some <laughs> topics for once. Okay, let's start with you today. Uh, I want to talk about the Ouya. It's so that Ouya. Ouya. How is that? How is that pronounced? The Ouya? Ouya. Yeah, it's Ouya. 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 Wait, is that what we were looking at? Like Something like that. with the research? Well, we uh, I was, a lot I was of looking things. at a little bit. I was researching a bunch of different stuff, but the Ouya itself. Do you remember? Did I tell you about the Ouya before? No. Nope. It's a little game console, maybe the size of a Rubik's cube. It, it looks fucking terrible. Oh my god, that remote fucking sucks. It, I think, it's, I, I it's think I've tiny. seen something about it before. Yeah. Well, the company is pretty much bankrupt. They're not bankrupt, but they're trying to sell the company there. Yeah, they're, they're trying, trying to they sell the company now, which really sucks. We had to buy the it and make their console into a Rubik's cube. We'd make some money. The I well, no here no, the, the idea the cube the idea behind their console the was so was so cool you know it was like bucks, empowering hmm? gamers and bringing stuff back to the television instead of at the PC now honestly I honestly don't like that you know but I I, I like the I like the motivation behind it. the motivation behind it is pure it is a it is a platform that can be that can be tweaked. And it can be changed, and it can be it can be modified in any way you want, and it won't turn itself into a brick. It do, it doesn't own it doesn't have homage to any company. It it is its own thing. You can do anything with it. You can build games for it. You can anybody can build a game for it. Right? Yeah, than like once you to buy the console, you do the dev kit. They say that, but you still probably need programming. But I like the other. I bought one when they first came out. I, Basic programming is not that hard, and I've actually made. Like very, very, very simplistic arcade style games before. I'm so sorry, I really want to show you what actual programming is. That's why I said basic. Well, only did, he's basics. talking about like visual basic. We're talking like what, like Game Maker here? Cause, like, no, 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 not like really Game really Maker. Basic. Never mind. Never We're mind. Still Basically, still he knows time. what he, he, he's seen it before. I think that we actually required you to we took, we took the C++. same. We took, we took a Demedia class together. At one point. Yeah, I took an audiovisual class and then I took um, an actual programming class at the high school, but it's not anything major. It's only the basics. Oh, Neil, that I took that program class. It was so crappy. <laughs> I, it but was gosh. actually pretty good for us. Yeah, yeah. it helped. And I, I can do basics, like I said. Of course, you probably learned from your class and how much of an ass you are. I'm such a massive. But he is a massive. It's not really asshole. something that I can get into. Oh, or I'm like a last white body. Back on topic, though, the Ouya company is basically just so far down the hole that they're pretty much just selling everything they've got. I think towards like the name. At least ten million plus, like down the hole. I mean, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's That's pretty bad. But the really console is. was it was supposed to be so great, but it's crappy. Like a two hundred a hundred dollar phone is damn near more powerful than that thing. Like when I bought mine, I couldn't pick up a fucking wife. I had to literally take it out of its aluminum case, pull the little fucking bolt out, and then stick it. Just anywhere I could to get a fucking Wi-Fi signal because that thing blocked the fucking Wi-Fi signal. That's pretty bad. Which is a pretty yeah. big design flaw. I mean, you should... <laughs> Plus, the way they have all the crap, is you plugged in anything in the back, basically, it like, tilted and nearly fell over every time. It had, like, no weight on the bottom to keep it from, like, falling over if you put too many cords into it. <laughs> I saw somebody put their phone on top of it. As weight? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's bad. We well, have to the do whole, that. The whole weight thing, how you're talking about that, that's kind of an engineering flaw. Because like even I know, like anytime I design, like I'm messing with a game where you can make your own crap, I usually put something heavy on the bottom, especially in a vehicle that has wheels, so it doesn't flip backwards. Like besieged. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Sure, <laughs> played so much besieged. Oh, but. Yeah, the Ouya's gone now. So if you, know, if you have the money, you can totally buy that company right about now. Yeah, totally buy the company. It would be amazing because I'd love Fix. to see it go into the They're probably, I think they'll probably survive. They'll probably get someone who buys them and then just kind of extends it or attempts to extend it. I, I hope somebody fixes it. Research says no. I hope somebody fixes it because Ouya, the, the idea they had was so great, so grand, so, you know, just awesome. It, in my eyes, I thought it was a really cool thing they wanted to do, but... It just sort of fell apart. Nobody really knew about it. Plus, then they were trying to release it in like a weird way. Like every year, you had to buy a fucking new one. Like every single year, they were trying, going to eventually do that because it was not powerful enough for a hundred bucks. No, it's not. But you know, you got to think. I mean, you can either buy a one hundred dollar game console that works like shit, apparently, or you could 
you know, so save up your money and buy and a Steam I'm, box and have a different console that can run Steam games. And still work like shit because it's based on Linux and there's not many Linux games at the moment. No, there's not. But you can still run a shitload of stuff on the Steam OS. And like you're talking about that $100, like, you know, for the people that wouldn't know how it runs, they would probably put this in mind. 100 bucks versus the 300 that everything else is, or sometimes five. Yeah, but yes, we're, we're also sometimes why. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, if, if you're gonna do something like that, you might as well just go with Raspberry Pi. I like that <laughs> Raspberry Pi. I like Raspberry Pi because you could just like. Oh my fucking god! Why do people keep dying in this town? <sighs> Every time That's we look at the okay. sirens. I wonder if they can hear that. If, that, if that'll be picked up. Normally, I think it would. There's sirens. If you can't hear it, it's, yeah, it's like every fucking day. Yeah, every day. That's your homes, Megan. What does dessert have to do with anything? No, it's that. You, you haven't heard of the Raspberry, raspberry pie? pie? I don't know either. It's, it's Red, a little raspberry computer. Pie is like, a, it's big. It's a computer yeah. that is literally the size of your phone. Yeah. And yeah, it has USB it. ports. Uh, um, HDMI port and HDMI port. It has audio in and out. Yeah, audio in and out, and that's uh, it. It has RAM on it. It has, it has RAM on it. CPU, ever CPU, and then what you do is you can is you can boot, like it boots Linux. I think you can I'm boot sure. Linux, and then you can boot you can boot games to it. Oh, it's a it's a good um, play a lot of games arcade on. like. If you want to build like a little arcade cabinet, a yeah. lot of people use Raspberry Pis for that. Yeah, and you can, like and then you can bucks. emulate almost any uh, okay. emulated game on it. Yeah. Oh, right. it's, Dark Fox. But yeah, it's yeah, it's that. it's good. But I like the competition better. It's like double the price, but you get a lot more fucking features. But I mean, there's a lot you can do with Raspberry Pi. It's cheap. It's like thirty bucks, and I mean, if you if you put it together properly, you can do a lot with it. And if you buy a bunch of them, you can chain them together and make more powerful Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi with extra pie, <laughs> with extra raspberries and sugar. Mm-hmm. Before we get into are we talking about dessert yet? We are now. <laughs> <laughs> Before we end the Josh topic, I got one more, and it's about Apple, because we have to talk about Apple. Every, every, Apple. every week, we've been waiting for a week that we're going to that we're gonna say, Apple didn't fuck up this week. At least where I could find an article they didn't fuck up. But apparently and the new like, Apple we, were, we were like, oh, we're actually going to be able to say Apple didn't fuck up this week. And then, I found and then like five minutes before the podcast started, Apple fucked up. Damn it! <laughs> yeah. Apple's Damn watch. It. Apple if watch. If you have a tattoo on your wrist, you might not be able to use it because it uses the heart rate monitor to tell if you're actually wearing it. And if it can't tell, then you can't use a lot of the features like pay, access apps, get notifications, because apparently they decided to never fucking test it on someone with a tattoo. Yeah, so if you have a tattoo on your wrist, it blocks its capability to know whether or not to sense your heartbeat. So then if you have a tattoo on your wrist, you're fucked. And a lot of people have tattoos on their wrist. And, in fact, a lot of people have tattoos on both of their wrists. Okay, I, I, I'm probably going to feel stupid for asking, but, like, how, why would that block it? Okay, what it does is it sends... I don't know either. Well, I'm about to explain it. It sends, uh, like, infrared, like, red and green, yep. red and green to your thing. It, it captures your blood vessel, basically. And if you're pumping more like, more blood in it, it can tell if there's more blood through your wrist. So it's telling if your heart's beating. Basically, by sending a signal to your blood vessel, and it comes back. Well, if you have a bunch of tattoos that are blocking that, because I guess, I don't know what, it didn't say what colors block it, but I'm guessing what, red guess or black, black. something like black that. Reflects it. It's, tattoo ink is very reflective. But yeah, basically if it blocks it, then the Apple, the fucking watch can't tell you wearing it, and I guess there's no saying saying wearing it. Like, I guess. <laughs> so, so apparently tattoo ink reflects infrared. I don't know. I'm going to have to remember that. <laughs> but what cameras. infrared cameras just coat myself in tattoos all over. I mean, the girls may not like me anymore, but hell. But what kind of I'm billion? I'm really single forever anyway. It's not like it matters. What kind of billion dollar company doesn't At least fucking test yeah. tattoos? What kind of company's like? I, I got a hundred billion dollars in the bank. Let's not bother testing. Fucking Everybody tattoos. in my family has tattoos, except and except for me. Maybe sometime not soon. It's gonna be his ass tattooed. <laughs> It's gonna be like, just get the USDA me. choice beef stamp on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> My dad wants to do that. He's all like, I really want that beef. <laughs> so, uh, Prime beef, topics. mind you. I do have topics, but I just wanted to say real quick about the whole Apple It's thing. Angus. You just take the G out. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, let's We're not talk at once because it's hard to edit. It's hard to edit. <laughs> We're talking about food a lot. <laughs> I, you know, it's probably because we just ate and are still kind of hungry. I'm not. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm I, You cannot quench 
that. Anyway. Your hunger. So, I just wanted to comment on the whole tattoo thing. Maybe it's just one of those things that are like, ah, don't worry about it. You know, it's like, what in what world would that matter? You know, when you think about it. Because most things would use a sort of a acoustic. Something that would actually detect the sound. Or, or actually feel it. Yeah. Yeah, like... Like we the can feel screen pulses of the with our fingers. Why can't it? That, yeah, so yes. like, I'm sure there'd be a sense way you could put like a G sensor in there or something that would do that. G sensor the G. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's just one of those things that they're like, oops. But oh, still, well. what the fuck, Apple? <laughs> Stop fucking up, damn it. Wait, one week, Apple, man. One our, week. So here are comments. Hey, just add that. Yeah. I'm not going to add that this. though. Don't make another one and say this is the second one. The, so the first one, I'm this, sorry. this reminds me. There's this thing called uh, the vein fire that they put in the hospital. I know this is incredibly off topic, but it, it actually works the same way. It, it works. And it's called it's called the vein fire finder. And what it does is it projects infrared onto your skin, so like on your arm, and it will pick up the heat signals and it will pick up all the blood vessels in your arm. Now, what it does is it senses that. And then it actually projects, uh, like a projector does, literally projects a picture onto your arm in place of where it would actually be, so that you can, it's like looking through the skin, and you can actually see where all the blood vessels are, and you can, you can like put it here, underneath your elbows, so normally where you get shots put into your bloodstream or on your wrist, it makes it to where nurses don't have to poke you 30 times, which fucking sucks. Like well, I'm, I'm right. lucky enough to have always had a good nurse draw blood. It, it sucks, dude. I, my, I've been poked probably ten times before they actually found the vein. My grandpa, like, he has really thick veins that you can see clearly. Mm-hmm. But she did this. She didn't take know. it back out and try it again. She went like that, and then she started moving it around oh, trying to find no, it. No, don't do that. It sounds like it'd be great for heroin. That'd be it's like, finally. painful. <laughs> Get my drugs faster. The thing is, it's like it's like seeing through the skin. It's really cool. So I mean, you can you can put it on all different parts of the body. <laughs> you can. <laughs> now my topics are so far away from that. It's not even really that funny. I just thought I just thought that'd be something interesting to throw in there for a minute. Well, it's yeah, that's really cool. Text. That's an interesting. Thing. I want one just, me just, the... just because just because it would be a lot of fun to play with it. Solely because it would be a lot of fun just to like. Yeah, well, oh, while you see the blood. Yeah. <laughs> It, it kind of reminds me of the, the hologram thing. Oh, and if it starts, like, if the blood starts thinning, I'd probably cut myself somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you got topic-wise? All right, well, first I want to talk about um, earlier today, whenever we were at the library before the whole Hannah incident, I had Michael play a game called Outlast. Yes, Outlast. Quite fun, and I screamed a couple times. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was ki- it was kind of bad God time. library. It, it was kind of bad timing. We weren't out in the library. We were in the meeting room. But, um... <laughs> where, it's where it's okay oh. to scream and nobody will hear you. So, yeah. good to know. <laughs> I hope you picked that up. It probably um, did. That was my neck cracking, by the way. <laughs> so, we were in the meeting room and there was people watching anime behind us. And we were over here and I'm, like, watching him play Outlast. And I'm watching how he's approaching certain situations. He did not want to crawl in that vent at the beginning. He just really did. He was like, why the fuck would you... <laughs> that vent, no. Why would I go in there? There's this, like, period blood on the floor and everything. <laughs> and anyway. <laughs> There's just blood everywhere. I don't want to go in there. The, the game Outlast is one of the most popular indie horror games. Yeah, you don't get a weapon. Yeah, and it's one, that's one of the things I think makes a good horror game. Which, okay, doesn't, which I don't like because I like my weapons. I <laughs> think a good horror game lets you have a weapon and you get to choose what dies or what's going to kill you. Nothing like would kill you. Like no. Dead space. You can kill the things that are coming after but, you. But I don't yes, like but is that truly horror? The genre horror is supposed yeah. to exemplify... The and first one was horror, though. Yeah, it's supposed to make there. you fear I don't like that for the situations. <laughs> It's just nothing you but jump Dead scares. Space. You told me you couldn't get past the first level without taking that headset off. Oh, I scared the play, fuck out of play me. Play Dead Space 3. Does that not just Class a 5 4? Is that not what you just said? But, yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying what makes a good, like a very... I'm sorry, hold on. What, Michael? 
I'm gonna agree with Rusty. Dead Space is a shooter. It is not a horror game. It was a just, horror Because trust though. me, because trust me, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, it's really fucking scary. But it is nothing but jump scares. And after I play it for a while, I know when I fucked up, and I know, and I'm I know it's to gonna happen. It. And jump scares don't affect me after the first thirty minutes. The next day I'll play it. It'll probably scare the crap out of me a couple times. And after the next thirty minutes, I won't be scared anymore because it's just jump scare. That's how Dead Space is. I well, cannot play the game and be scared because it is nothing but jump well, scares. Dead Space. I, I, I guess I can agree with you there because, like, I after I made it to a certain point, I started charging at them. Yeah, it was like, oh look, there's children and things over there. Yeah, there's probably something over there. I'm gonna have to kill. Oh look, that vent over there just moved. I'm walking down this dark hallway. I'm probably gonna have to kill something in this hallway. Oh, Better look, pull out my saw gun. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> in general, I'm gonna have to oh, kill something. In general, I'm gonna have to kill something. Dead Space One was semi scary. It was actually pretty scary. Dead Space Two was literally a clone of that, and then oh. Dead Space Three was literally just a fucking shooter. Dead Space I just Two, ran through that game trying to kill everything as fast Two, as possible. I did not find scary at all. Dead Space Three, I have yet to even see gameplay for, but I know it's out. I like I like some of it. I like some of the atmosphere in it, but honestly, what makes a horror game for me is atmosphere. It is pacing and atmosphere. Number two, number one, and number two things is pacing. I like how. What is it? Amnesia. Yes. Amnesia does pacing so well. They do pay, and Outlast did pacing pretty well because Am- Amnesia does it a little bit different. It lets you walk around in this dark, scary house for a while, and then you start seeing like a goat thing, but you don't ever really see it. And then they don't let you really see the monster. They let you pick up clues and you hear things, and the lights go really dark. And you know there's some shit going on, you just don't see it. And that that is what makes you scared. That is what makes you start to fear, is because you fear what you can't see. And then, you know, after you actually see a monster in the game, you have to look at it for a while, you just kind of don't really care after a while. So, honestly, they shouldn't show you the monster right off, or what you're, what you're facing right off. And... I think Amnesia did it incredibly well that you don't really see it almost ever. You just see flashes of it, and when you do, you're shitting yourself. Because <laughs> the, the, they, they pace it in the atmosphere. It's so good in that game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But the uh, thing about Outlast is I, I wanted to get your impressions off that game because of... I fact. liked it. I liked it. I would probably keep playing it until I beat the game because I liked how, how it was paced, and I liked how... And, you know, I, there's this one part where you're walking down the hallway, and you see this guy, and he's sitting in a wheelchair. And he, I thought it was a body at first, and I saw him jiggle. Then he's jiggling, he's moving around. You see him moving around, and, oh, he's alive. So I walked really slowly past him, because I was like, shit, he's going to come at me. And, no, he didn't do a thing. So I walked back, I walked through a room on the left. Go through the room, there's more people in there that are apparently alive. When everything else in this area is dead, there's blood on the walls, there's guts hanging out of air vents. They were actually sh- watching a TV that had yeah. nothing on it. It was yeah. just a blood splatter across the TV. It's like, fuck on. that, I'm gone. Yeah, so I walked back, I got the thing I came there for, came back around, and I walked really past for the first three guys, and I was like, oh, nothing's gonna happen at all, so they haven't attacked me, so I just keep walking. And I'm walking, my, my, my heart kind of settles because I was scared at first. Walk, keep walking, walk up to the guy in the wheelchair, just kind of start nonchalantly walking past me, jumps out of the wheelchair and fucking pins me to the ground. <laughs> just like, I was like, Ugh! I scared. I got scared. screamed in the middle of the water. But what I'm saying, a game that is truly a horror game, like y'all were saying, is not Dead Space. Dead Space becomes a shooter at some point. The third I'm not saying Call Dead Space is bad. No, no, no. Dead Space was I like a good the, game. I really like the story. I love Dead Space. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a horror game. It doesn't scare me enough. Yeah, exactly. I want I want to have to change my pants after I play this game. If you're gonna play a horror game, it needs to be horrifying. The ty- the type of game I'm talking about is is something like Outlast or Amnesia. You feel inferior to the things around you. You are fearing because, or you you are full of fear because you don't know what you're gonna have to deal with. You don't know exactly what's coming at you. Mm-hmm. In a in a game like Outlast. At one point, you think you know what the definite antagonist is. This fucking big-ass dude... Spoiler alert. 
fucking big ass dude throws you through a window within the first ten minutes of the game. Yeah, but the you... thing is, the big ass dude scared the shit out of me because I checked the area around me so much before I started walking through this hallway. I checked the hallway like up and down. And there's nothing here. This is perfect. There's no blood on the walls. There's nothing. Everything's good and fine and fun. And I can walk through here. And he pops out of nowhere and throws me through the window. You don't even see him. He just comes out of nowhere. He's just like, come on. He comes out of nowhere and says something like, uh, I got come you on, little now. pig. Yeah, or something like that. And he throws you through the window. So after that, I started playing the game. And I started sticking to the areas that had blood on the wall. Because he's not going to go back there. The places that are nice and clean and pretty, that's where he's going to be. And that's where he's going to kill you. <laughs> because <laughs> so he hasn't gotten all, there yet. Where, the, where all the blood is and the guts are hanging out of air vents and shit, that's where you need to be. Because he's already been there. He don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you got another uh, well, I'm still I'm still sort of on that. I was going to say, the type of game that I'm referring to makes you feel inferior. So things like not having a weapon is very important in that type of atmosphere. Don't you feel Or that? having oh. a weapon that might be able to take one or two, but very, very scarce. So maybe so Resident Evil, the very Resident first one, where yeah. you could not find bullets, but bullets were pretty much useless yeah. anyway? Silent Hill. There Silent Hill, I will attest to, is Silent Hill 1 and 2 are the best horror games ever made because the atmosphere the atmosphere was very good the pacing was very good and I felt like I had to change my pants afterwards See, I don't I don't like that at all I don't like a game that makes me feel like I can't do shit I want a game that pushes fear but in real life fear is fight or flight I want both options this is I don't true. literally this want is true. one um, or the other if you, if you want a game like that The Last of Us The Last of Us will scare the ever loving shit out of you because crap happens and then, and then not only does, does it scare you, it makes you really sad and want to cry. Like, literally, the first ten minutes of this game, I'm a six-foot-five guy, and I have a beard and everything. And uh, I'm sure you'll see a picture of me eventually. And I was whining like a little girl at the beginning of this game because it was so sad. He said that, and I just realized that we all have facial hair. Yes, we all have beards. <laughs> Some more than others. It's where our power lies. <laughs> it is, it is. Actually, my hair is the source of my power, but you know. <laughs> but the, none, nonetheless. A game that invokes the emotions in people, it, like you were saying a couple, like I think last week, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, I don't remember. G- games are a form of art. They, they are, absolutely they are. Have these they are. They're like, playing a game that has a good story is like reading a book. Yeah. See, I like games with story in there. If there's not a story there, don't expect me to actually play it. That's why I don't like Call of Duty anymore because, <laughs> because the duty. stories just suck so bad. Well, there's the story, so... <laughs> what I'm saying is that games are a form of art in their own way. They are appreciated by their own fans in, in different ways. And my... And you, you are for graphics. I'm a really big story guy and sound guy. No, no, I love story too. I know, I, but I'm saying you're way in there. The graphics. Well, talk about sound. Talk to me because I, yeah, like, I, 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 I will, I will talk about the sound. I'll talk about how Battlefield sounds all day because I love how Battlefield sounds. It just, it sounds right. Don't you like Titanfall and the shit? Time? I like. I do like I do like Titanfall mostly because of the gameplay. It's really kind of a fun. It's like thirty gigs of fucking sound. I like game. story and seeing how close they can get to like real life, like mainly ballistic stuff. Because like I like I'm a big sci-fi person. Yeah. So like if they can make that relatively realistic, like if we had that kind of stuff, then I like that. But it's really hard to find those because how do you know? They only ever make them once in a while, honestly. And the ones that are made, everybody else is scared of making something like it because they can't hold up to it. Something like that. Because it's like it's hard to get past the sci-fi stereotype of alien and human. Like, what else is there to do? <laughs> it's not the only fucking stereotype they actually have for sci-fi. Or yeah, bullshit yeah. weapons. Like this weapon can kill the planet. Because I mean, like, but it shoots that. If guy you look at my weapon. Steam library, I have probably like ten games that are all the same thing. You're humans. Like trying to like expand into the galaxy, and there's a bunch of alien races there. And that's it. But that's pretty much it. Like, no, there's no story there. It's just sci-fi. you need to do this. But you can be in aliens and whatnot. But they're all the same, just different skins. That's all sci-fi can do, though. If you go into space, the only thing you can ca- encounter are fucking aliens. I don't know though, because like if you look at Star Trek and Star Wars, those are both sci-fi, both completely different spectrums, both great in my opinion. But both aliens. They have aliens everywhere. They have aliens, but so. So does um yeah, but if you look at the way they're put together, 
it's the not exactly not about an alien. the aliens on Star Wars. It's like it's not that. It's mostly the human stuff, like like a civil war. Look at Star Trek. It's exploration. A lot of aliens. They're just trying to make peace with everyone, not kill. Game we haven't mentioned yet. yet. Mass Effect. Mass Effect. I oh, I've been trying to find the first, second, and third one because I want to play it all the way through. I've only played the beginning of the second, the third, and I haven't even seen the first one. But Mass Effect does all three, like all of those things. It has the weird weapons that you can only pretty much find in the future. It's got the alien races that, that you can either speak friendly, incoherent languages, that, and you can be friendly with them, or you can be a total douche. It has that open world feature to it whenever you're going around doing other like certain yeah, like, things. Even though, like Mass Effect 3, it, like it says, hey, you need to go here and go, but I want to go over there. Yes. Sorry. It, with Mass Effect, it, it says you need to do this, but in between here and here, I don't care what the fuck you do. <laughs> yeah, like, and they're like, hey, you need to do this. This is your top priority. And then like on the way there, hey, this is going on. Okay, I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like in Mass Effect 3, it's like, this is your top priority. The, uh, Cerberus is doing this and this and this, and then like because at Cerberus that point is doing... it wasn't even Cerberus. So on Cer- three, like Cerberus on three, was it was all like not all, but a lot of it was. Hey, we need to do this to prepare for the Reaper. Hey, we need to do this to prepare for the Reaper. Hey, you're a douche. Go do this. And then like on the way to deal with one problem though, you can get like, hey, Cerberus is attacking a school full of kids. Ooh. And you can either do I make that moral them. decision to go help the kids, or do I go straight over here to talk to Reeve, who you likes know, to point shotguns at me? Did you know that if you do every single good decision, you can actually convert the enemy leader at the end? Except I made the mistake of doing one bad decision because <laughs> I felt that it was right. I believe they've actually added another option to the game as DLC recently to the ending you're talking about the Mass Effect 3 ending yeah yeah they changed it because it fucking sucked no man the, the ending was beautiful it made me angry you but at the same time it made me the happy wrong choice no dude the ending the very first thing from Mass Effect 3 was absolutely let down none of the decisions you made prior mattered at all they I actually don't. do like I said if you can make all the good ones you can either you can do something great at the end, do all the bad ones, you can be a total douche to the one guy. I'm just standing up because I get tired of sitting. Oh, well, Austin stood up, so I decided I need to wipe out three first. He's like, you do this, this, or this. Like, you have three options. None of the fucking choices matter. <laughs> they actually do. Sometimes those options will make certain races act differently towards you. There's not an entire pension because it mattered. There's I a pension to bitch aspect. about the devs well, because the ending didn't mean shit. You ever heard the, the theory, like, not the theory, the, the saying, it's not the destination... It's the How journey. How do you get there? But no. That's like me promising you for, all Mass for three years and they give you a fucking fiat. Hey, you've obviously played Mass Effect 3. There's that area where you have to, like, you can either sabotage these people's reproductive systems, like, and, like, kill off this whole race here. Or you can, like, let them live. How do you sabotage someone's reproductive systems? It's because it's, it's a long story. It really is. But, like, you, like, put lead in their water or some shit? No, but if you do, the, you if you do the wrong thing... They can easily say, no, we're not going to help you. There's actually situations where if you don't do what they say, that race is not going to help you. Your fleet's going to be weak at the end, giving you less time to do what you have to do. Or do you just inbreed everybody? Or, or do you, or It's do a you long just... story, Michael. I'm or, sure all or, the Mass Effect fans understand what I'm talking about. Or do you just we'll explain everybody it later. hate each other so much that they don't want to bang? No, you just I don't that. think that's possible. I, 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 you know, I, I, I'll agree with you. There's people that hate each other and they'll still bang. <laughs> I actually don't have anything to add on Mass Effect because I never played it. Well, like I said, it's a long story that has to do with it. I said Mass Effect fans would get it, so we can explain that Sorry, later. Sorry, guys. I... So, I like... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the horror game guy today. That's all I'm he pretty really much is. going to talk about. And I'm doing what I always do. I just kind of chime in. That's what I do. You three guys, have y'all, y'all have heard of the... Uh, have you ever heard of... Uh, not Outlast. Uh, Vanish. The game Vanish. What is Vanish? Vanish is, uh, it, it was made popular by a lot of YouTubers. Basically, you're in an underground tunnel. It tells you nothing about why you're there, how, how you got there, anything. You're in an underground tunnel. And then you just, like, you, you spawn randomly in the world. Just there. So you're walking around, and you're like, where the fuck am I? You'll see, like, arrows on the walls, and you can run into things, and it'll, like, make sounds. And then you're like, what is the point of this? 
And then you you finally find like a note on the wall or something. And it says, hey, Phil, I'm headed here. And then like you're still like, okay, what the fuck's going on? Apparently I'm Phil. No, no, you're not Phil because there's a note from Phil to the other guy. Oh. I think his name is Jeff. I don't remember. But you're walking through here. You have no idea why you're, why you're here. But once you get to a certain point, you see something standing or maybe sometimes crouching in a corner. The whole game is randomly generated. You can walk down a hallway, turn around and walk back, and you will not be in the same place you were. I would be that guy that just keeps walking back and forth in the hallway. (laughs) But Vanish does something really well, okay? It... it, The enemies in the game are like these bird-like mole creatures. They, like, will sort of crouch down and just sort of stay like that. Like, they've been underground for so long oh, they've lost their ability to see. I know what you're you know about. what I'm talking see, about it took now. Me, it took me so long just to figure out what you're talking about. I Whether you're now. underground, you can't see very well. They can see everything because of hearing and smell, basically. So you could walk down a hallway, reach a dead end, and you're thinking, well, shit. You can turn around and there will be a fucking thing just at the other end of the hallway, walking down the hallway toward you, and it, your only recourse is to stand absolutely fucking still. Like the clickers in The Last of Us. Very much like the clickers. Wait, but I like the If box. you take one step, that thing will hear you and run at your ass. Shouldn't they be able to smell you, though? Kind of. I'm saying. You would, like, you would think that, but, you know, it's like, there's so it's so drafty down there, it probably throws it off. See, they should have put something where you could piss on the wall and, like, go to that, like, yes! Yeah, that'd, that'd have been wall. interesting. Maybe you have to, <laughs> after after so many hours, you have to piss. Anyway, but what happens, like, if you're being chased? You're like, oh. Wait, <laughs> well, there's no point if you're being chased. <laughs> yeah. Just wet so, your pants. so, at that point, though, like, the game does something very well. Whenever you're walking through the entirety of this world, that is so randomly generated, you can walk, you can walk by a fucking pipe and it'll bust. When that pipe busts, all of the monsters in the game are headed toward you because they <laughs> heard that. And then if you accidentally walk into a gate, that's guess locked. what? Yeah, and if you walk into a gate that's locked like thirty times, <laughs> like Markiplier on YouTube, <laughs> that was that was. He was like, "Well, what's the point here?" Like, walks down the hallway. There's one in front of him. He walks down the other way, and there's one behind him. He's like, "Well, fuck." <laughs> Just run. Don't Straight. rattle gates. Don't <laughs> rattle things. Don't rattle gates. If you hear a like, a, another thing. This now. Yeah, another thing. He, oh my god, he hates that game now because. <laughs> So many. He's played that game like eleven fucking times. <laughs> he beat it the eleventh time. Oh wow! I love how like he was sitting there like holding still, and then it started to walk off, and he was like he barely took a step forward, and it just like got it. Will hear the step, and it will turn around and rape you. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I took like half a step. But the thing about that game is that it doesn't tell you anything. That there's like pretty much no story that I've seen so far. There is. Like, no real reason or rhyme to why you're down there. There's just, holy shit, these things are going to kill me. So... And you can also hide inside the tunnels that they made. Yes, the ran- but the randomly generated factor of it is such a unique thing. A lot of games are doing that now. And some, but some people have gone instead of randomly generated to something called procedurally generated. Have you guys heard of that? No, I'm, I'm just exploring game dev. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm, I don't even talk to me. I know. I'm just being a dick. Yeah. Okay, for you and Michael, for, for Austin and Michael, procedurally generated basically means it's not coming up with things right off the spot. Okay? Whenever you launch the game, it builds the world then, and nothing changes after that. In a randomly generated horror game, you could walk down a hallway, turn around, walk back, and you're suddenly at the end. You, mean, right? you have no idea what happened. So, I actually really like this idea. Why don't they do that with maps on shooter games? What do you mean? That would procedurally be or randomly? procedurally procedurally generated maps on ge- on shooter games would I, make it so challenging because you don't know where all the hiding spaces are ever. I can actually explain why they don't do that. Why? I can tell you why. Uh, well, for a competitive aspect. Well, that's just competitive, but you gotta think of it. if they do it procedurally, because it depends how they write it, it could literally be like, 
Well, your guys want to spawn a fucking tunnel that's thirty feet wide, and moment they find that's your spawn, you're going to get gunned down. Well, constantly. I mean, you, should, you would have like yeah, safe spawns, and you would have like the first two rooms of the map are standard, but everything after that is is how it's made. To do it. Now, I, I like. I actually really like that idea because I mean, because then it's like it's random every time. Like you yeah, walk in and goes. Oh wait! Like you see because, something. I mean, okay, I, were, they've generated this one before. And then you'd go around the corner and goes, "Wait, no, they haven't." If if you were actually in a combat scenario in something like a lot of these games are put in, you would not know the landscape at first. You would not. You would probably have an idea of where you are and what the place looks like. You would see like an overhead view of it, but you have never possibility of you ever having set foot in there and knowing where everything is is very very low. So it would it would. It would train on your ability to think on how to art smart the enemy rather than and just would, know where it they're It would going have to. Be. It would have train your reflexes too, because yes. you would see things coming around the corner like really quick that and usually you know, you'd be ready for. Yeah, and you wouldn't know where all these corners lead to, so it would it would be an entirely different competition, which I would. Totally it would be more right about forward. the tactics rather than the. Rather okay, than. let's camp here right now. Yeah. Which I can understand, but. I mean, like he was saying though, with the spawns, you can fix that. Yeah, you can fix. For that instance, easily. you could make it a, like a, a futuristic type shooter, like Dust Five on Four or Titanfall, where you spawn in a ship, and then you end up leaving from the ship, and then everything's random after that. Yeah, and you and you spawn in intervals around the map. Well, Titanfall, or you could spawn in, in squads, like freaking um, uh, Mag did. I don't know if you've yeah. ever played Mag, but there was a like forty-five second spawn time in between waves of squads. It was really, really neat because you would spawn in a squad like Battlefield yeah. with your entire squad. That way you weren't just out freelancing by yourself. But most of the people in MAG didn't know that and ended up running off and just like with a SMG and just sort of like... Every, every, like, I'm going to go shoot my teammate in the back and then I'm going to go throw a grenade over here. It's like they had if, no If idea they had a procedurally game. generated maps on an online shooter game, I would play the hell out of it. I think I would too. I, I would. I, I mean, my quick, my one thing would be it would sound good and it would play a lot like Battlefield. Yeah, I think it'd be very <laughs> interesting. Procedurally generated games are, are becoming slightly more of a, a popular thing now. There's this one uh, horror game called Phantasmal that I actually have pulled up on my computer right now. He's been wanting to talk about this for a while now, and we yeah. just kind of like yeah, we keep, we keep sort of going off and off and off. But with the whole thing, Phantasmal is officially on the early access for. Uh, Steam right now and I want to mess with it but the thing is is that as much as I like the idea of procedurally generated worlds a lot of people have tried it and it just doesn't work sometimes because while procedurally generated means that okay this is where the objective is this is where the start is let's put a bunch of shit in between that's basically what they do there's a problem sometimes because you will end up in a circle or you will end up in a really fucked up situation where, like, like in... Uh, and I, I can think of an example where, like, maybe there's not a gap going to the other side. There's just, like, a wall between you and the other spawn. It's, it's like, possible, but, I mean, there's ways to fix that. Yeah, that's what there, I was there thinking. There are ways definitely, to fix it. There's definitely fail this, safes and ways to This fix is a it. very, very, very basic example, though. So, I'm sure... Because, like, like, I mess with, like, games that let you build your own scenarios and you have to do your own triggers. It requires so many trial and errors before you can actually work every little bug out of it. And that's one thing. I, I, I understand that. But what I'm, think of it this way. Procedurally generated games have a history of fucking over the player. Think of it as if you were playing like Left 4 Dead, and then as soon as you get to the safe room, there are four witches standing not over by the left of the door, but in the doorway. Shit like that can happen. I know how to stop that. Not stop that. I know how to get past that. Charge him? Nope. Have your teammates start a fight and say, hey, I'm going to help you out here, and then run past them and shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. The only problem with that is that in this situation, it's usually a single-player game. Yeah. You're still going to get fucked over. I'm not saying Left 4 Dead is a single player game. I'm saying like procedurally generated horror games are a good idea, but they have to be done right. So whenever you 
whenever you've got that sort of a system that can build up and build up and build up, and then suddenly at the end you're like, <sighs> because think of it like Outlast mixed with I like the Binding of Isaac. Okay, except all of the enemies in Outlast are going to be distributed randomly through the Binding of like through the Binding of Isaac and. All the maps are going to be randomly generated as you walk around in the idea of Outlast. So, like, in, in like, the perspective of it, Outlast. It, do, it does, like, looking at it, looking at the gameplay of it, it does look like, feels kind of like Outlast. So, I'm excited because I want it to work out. I think it'd be awesome. I really I want to play it. I, I'm thinking about going to early access right now, honestly. Um, but at the same time, I'm scared because I suck so much ass at the Binding of Isaac, and they're like, you, you, like whenever I'm saying I, I procedurally well. generated things can fuck you over, I will be the one it fucks over. Yeah, but procedurally generated, it's it's a guaranteed way to win though. Randomly, it could just like, and I walk straight into a fucking wall, and I turn and a fucking wall. Yeah, that actually happened to Markiplier on one of his videos. <laughs> yeah, he was exactly. like, "What the hell am I supposed to do?" <laughs> but I mean, if you do procedurally generated properly, and you get around the circles and the walls, and you do that properly, yeah, it's. It's very, very easy to Yeah, but like we say that. properly, but we also don't know how much goes into it. This is true. So, it's not that we know... But it, it seems, but it seems to me, looking at it from the standpoint of, could you not just put a fail-safe here so that this doesn't happen, so that when two things are together that... See, looking are at... not fail-safes to where we can't do that. Looking at just basic things that might have worked... It seems like, yeah, you could correct it pretty simply. Yeah. It just might take a little more effort that you might not want to put into it. But, but I mean, if you're going to make a game, and as big as the games industry but is... But regardless not, of how it turns you out, you might as well put in all you can to put in a game, or else everybody's going to critique you in such a way that you're going to end up... Yeah, but like, even if they made a trial run and they said, hey, let's put it in beta, and you know, it didn't work out in some scenarios, it's not like we're going to say, well, that sucked, because... Actually... I disagree with you that because there's a lot of fucking games like it's early access they fuck up one thing they get like a thousand fucking down votes for one small fucker because like oh you, serve someone down for a day you obviously misheard me I said I'm not going to I, I wouldn't do it either I, I honestly like I hate what Halo 5 did in the beta Good. and I am a huge Halo fan I am so probably I. the biggest Halo fan well not the biggest I've seen some pretty fucking out there ones but I am he's, he's yeah, he knows his Halo pretty I, bad. I know my right, shit. Master Chief? Yeah, right, Master like I've got my fucking Chief. Chief helmet in the corner of my room. There's one oh, sitting on top of an Xbox. He's got a wearable helmet. He has one in his dresser. He I has have two plasma pistols. He has two plasma pistols. Yeah, I mean, it's not even a joke. I was actually <laughs> looking at buying a replica energy sword last week. Oh, see, yeah. I, I don't see, know why. I wanted one so bad. You know, I was thinking about doing when I started forging. When I started forging steel, is just like put together all the components you are, and forge like a steel energy sword looking thing. I was going to say, if you're going to do a steel energy sword, make it the Arbiters. Yeah. Talking about the, prof the Prophet's Bane? Yeah. That thing looks cool, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, uh, it's like, it's different than the other ones. It's a little bit bigger. And I think it actually took one of the Spartans two hands to properly wield that one. Yeah. But the Elite can just go, I've got one hand It's going to be heavy enough as it is because it's because it's steel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's not like it's foam. It's no. It's definitely gonna be gonna be heavy. But why did they have to scale it to an elite? Because then we'd be like four of us going. Yeah, uh, I'm six five and I weigh three hundred pounds. And yeah, I've seen what the elites look like, and like someone had a scaled elite uh, model, and I stood next to it. It still looked good, a meter taller than I am. <laughs> It's huge, and so, I, I am I am the height of a short Spartan. God, we're off topic again. Yeah, we, we're getting off topic. But I'm saying yeah. though, when I brought up Halo Five, I can't stand what they did with the beta because it is no longer Halo. It's Call of Duty with, with a Halo, Halo skin. skin. Yeah, I know. I don't like it. It either. is. I played it. It absolutely is. I, I like certain aspects of it that they like. Like you can actually mantle over an object now. That's great. But then there's other aspects that's like, that's I don't like. You're, you're wearing bread now. Yeah. Anyway, so. What I'm saying is, 
I'm not going to bash the game right now because I haven't played the full version. It was still in testing. There's still room for them to fix the things I don't like. Even if I don't like it, I'm gonna. I want to get it. I, I want to play it because I have to know what happens. I had. I played the. I don't BF4. know if I'm mad about it right now. I am. I played I the BF4 to. beta and I loved it. And I, and I knew it was screwy. It screwed up a lot. And when BF4 came out after after they. After they took the beta and they fixed all the, all the bugs, BF4 came out. BF4 was still buggy as hell, and I still loved it. So I mean, that's an EA problem. That's EA in a nutshell, though. <laughs> that's an EA problem. It wasn't dice. It was definitely EA that pushed it out too much. Every developer was like, "No, we need a month." Like he's like, "Well, you got a week to do everything now." Yeah, I know what it's like to push work. <laughs> so you got a uh, math test. We got more. Uh, we got to talk about Skyrim and paid mods. Okay. Yeah, Valve shut down paid mods. I'm 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 bittersweet on that to be honest. Yeah, I am too. But hell, free mods is free mods, man. Okay. <laughs> I I'm happy because I don't want to pay for the mods. I'm not happy because some of those people really deserve the credit. They, they do. I I think there should be a donate button, especially for like the the, I, the, I already the know. bigger mods. There's a lot of really big mods out there, but I'm not gonna pay. A dollar for a, a, a cloak, okay? See, like I I'm know, sorry. I I'm do sorry, know some modders. people. I know some people that would be like, "Oh, there's a donate button," and they're like, "This was awesome," and then they're gonna donate some. But then you also have those people who are like, "This is great. I have the money here, but the only I'm not gonna do it. I wouldn't pay a dollar for a cloak mod is because I don't have money right now. I'm sorry, modders. I love you, and you guys make the Skyrim community incredible. Like, I went back to a mod that they like made. One or two years ago, for Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds, and that's an old two thousand, like two thousand two game. I freaking love that mod because like it has so much new crap in it. This is coming from the person who is the most anti mod. He has been the most anti mod person I he know really has. up until this week. Because <laughs> they finally touched the base on something that I like. <laughs> I don't think they were that good for this mod thing. I get why there should be paid bonds, but those. If there was a donate one here. See, you can't have donate the thing, the thing about a donate Donates button. for charity. There needs to be a tip button. I hate when people are like, do a donate button. They was like, you can't do a donate button. Okay, a tip it's button. Fucking tip. Put Give a tip button on there. And the thing is, if you put a tip button on there, they'd probably make more money. Okay, they would probably make more money because people are probably more inclined to, to say give a dollar tip than say, oh, that cloak costs a dollar. Fuck that. Well, and you know, there shouldn't. Uh, this problem with mods, it'd be a bunch of people bitching about paid mods and saying they do it right or they would. I'm tip. just using a cloak as like a, as a reference. There's tons of mods out. There. You just use a sword. They had a dollar fucking sword in that game. Yeah. But anyways, they, the no one wants to pay for fucking mods. Everyone says they would, but. In all honesty, would you actually willingly pay for a mod? There's a guy who put 2,000 hours into a fucking mod, and it was still fucking free, yet a fucking sword was for a dollar. That's the thing. You have, to, you have to be able to regulate which ones you would actually pay for. I've seen mods that are like basically a full-blown DLC for the game made by an entire crew of people. And I was like, dude, I would pay like 30 bucks for that. Like the yes, Skyrim? Like that small mod that I was <laughs> yeah, talking about? Like I, it adds quite a bit, and like like you said, it pretty much looks like a complete new DLC to it, and I believe it was by Petroglyph himself, which is the developer of that game, and I think I'd be willing to pay at least 15 for it, because of how much it adds. Cause, you know, it's just it's crazy sometimes, because you have to be able to regulate what is worth paying for and what is not. I'm not going to pay... Five bucks for a for a great sword that swings as fast as a dagger. Yes, there is a mod for that, and it's fucking stupid. But you know, I but I mean, we're talking there's there's that kind of thing, and then there and then there's mods like Beyond Skyrim, which is taking an entire mod team, and they started last year, I think, and they're probably not even going to release a basic beta version of it until next year. And if you don't, do you know what Beyond Skyrim is? Yeah, but I think they're keeping that free too. Yeah, and but the thing that what what Beyond Skyrim is is literally they are taking Skyrim and all of its graphics and they're expanding it to the rest of Tamriel and and pretty muchly taking Skyrim graphics and making 
all of the provinces. Yeah, in, I had, I had a business main idea. I'm gonna go burn down Black Mar because <laughs> you. I would. Because you're talking about like I wouldn't pay a dollar for this weapon or this cloak. What if there was like a pack that said like there's a set of this stuff and then you would technically save some of that and it's like you know things that you would really like and it's like a pack full of that stuff. Oh no, you're influencing Steam right now. Don't. Now they already have a pack. <laughs> but hey, if that's a dollar per mod know, there. Just be quiet. No, think about it though. If it's a dollar per mod and they put it into a pack, it would be a little cheaper than it would be if you went to purchase every mod. Or you could. But then you could. Button. But you could also go and purchase individually, if that's what you want to do. Because that's what I've thought about doing for the Star Wars games that are on there. Because I'm like, as much as I'd love to have all of them, I don't think I would play this one, this one, this one, or this one. So I might just go and buy this one. Yeah. See, problem is you never want to buy a mod book. Think about it. If you spend six bucks on a game, like thirty dollars on the fucking DLC, and it's like, oh, you want all these mods? Well, that'll be another hundred fucking dollars. A so, hundred dollars. Okay. You get mods like two hundred and fifty mods. Some of right those mods, quick. you get a lot of mods, and they just add up, man. Johnny. Yeah, that's true. Oh my god, Adriana. Adriana. Oh god. Well, my girlfriend <laughs> broke her Skyrim twice, and I had to go fix it three times actually, because the second time I broke it. <laughs> So, but yeah, didn't she actually list. get banned yes. from downloading mods because of how many she did? <laughs> yeah, she got, she got banned, banned from like the Nexus days. community for two days <laughs> because she downloaded too many mods. She's like, "What are mods?" Tells her about mods. Comes back two days later, I got banned from Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was a bot though or some other stupid thing. Oh my, I don't know. She got like she had downloaded like over a hundred and fifty mods. They might have thought she was like a bot or something. It's just like I didn't know your computer could do that. <laughs> like, like it's how she, I think it's the same thing she does for music because when I went up there to work with her and her mom she found music that she liked and she did, literally did this like a YouTube converter YouTube converter YouTube converter just constantly and she downloaded all that crap at the same time and was like what the heck my <laughs> computer couldn't do one if I wanted it to Your she also had like 50 itself. megabits down at her house I was yeah. like how is what I get I get 16 I want I want Google Fiber. Me too, God. I want that. <laughs> Google, come to Bowie. Come, come, come to Texas, Google Fiber. I want them so bad. That was so fucking nice. so, so fast. I couldn't take that out. What, our, our town name? Yeah. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I do. Well, dude. You how gave many, it, you gave, you're this being the first person. How many Austin's person, are our, in Bowie? Like Actually, like. 1,058 billion. Okay, okay, okay. I'll explain this to you. He says he doesn't give a shit about telling our our our, uh, our town name. Our first podcast, he didn't want us want us to say what state we lived in, no, or, or if we lived in America. And he really, I didn't he care about America. We had to talk to him. We had to really like convince him to say Rust, Rusty. My name's not Rusty, you dumbass. I've been saying my real name forever since. Said yeah. Russell, but, huh? but but we had to we had to give we had to like talk him into saying Russell. I, only because I call you Rusty because that's how he introduced you to well, me. Well, here's yeah, the thing. So that's like my Rusty. name. For I don't care. I don't have a Twitter. I don't have a Facebook. I don't have a mind. I have no social account. You will never find me. You don't have You guys on the other account on hey, the other hand to fucking screw. I have no, Dude, never put my last name Dude, if you tried to find me, here. you'd have good luck trying to... Uh-uh, there's no... But like, like, I, I have not so put my last name in here. Like he said, there People are so many Austin's just in this town. Just yeah. in this town, there's I can list at that least like twenty on my. Like, I found my doppelganger not too long ago. Now you guys keep complaining about me saying the town name. You said it. I think you said it. I think you said it now. I'm not complaining. It. And what time is it? I think we're pretty close to. Bowie, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> we're at a. Uh, like the zip code with that. <laughs> we're at fifty-eight minutes. Okay, we're pretty much done. I mean, All we're right, pretty well, much pretty much done. Yeah, I think we've talked about everything except for Call of Duty Black Ops Three. <laughs> Which I'm not even gonna talk about because I, I saw it I saw the release for it and I was like I'm not even I'm not even gonna look it up I'm not even gonna try and I look had at to it. watch an ad because I was gonna go look at a Star Wars video and it made me watch the ad ad longer. it is basically I am I Call am of Duty Advanced my fist. Warfare not Warfare Warfighter reskinned that's it it's the same game just reskinned it is Advanced Warfare by the way Advanced Warfighter is Ghost Recon. Which they probably stole from Ghost Recon, by I'm the way. Clenching I don't know. I'm really trying to figure this out. Right, well, so their names are so similar to everything else. Anyway, Rusty's right. We should probably wrap this up. Right, yeah. right. My name's Russell. My name's Josh. I am Michael. I'm Austin. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Sorry, Hannah. I love you. <laughs>